ourselves through, you know, the crap and we feel really bad. And it's like, oh, I'll just do this for some length of time. And then I'll merge out the other side, you know, and, and be in this place of success and it will all look great. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, you can skip the crap part. You can just focus on what do I need to do that feels good to me. If you're someone who has always wanted to get consistent clients in their online service-based business without the pressure to post on social media, I made this podcast specifically for you. I'm Leslie Stevens, and I'm so excited to welcome you to the Not an Influencer show, where we chat about other organic marketing strategies that you can use to bring clients into your business quickly and easily, and the tangible tips for you to move forward faster in your business, and the stories of the entrepreneurs who are doing the same every single day. You do not have to be an influencer to be an impact maker and a successful online business owner. Today we get to chat with Stacy. Stacy, tell us a little bit about you and what you do. Yes, hi everybody. I'm so happy to be here. My name is Stacy Rowan. Um, I am a life coach, mainly for entrepreneurs, and um, I work with them using human design and mindset to help them show up unapologetically as themselves in their business. And um, what I find through work, my own work, and working with clients is that when you have a deep understanding of yourself and how you're meant to be in the world without everybody else's opinions and shoulds and ideas um, about who you are, then that is actually starting from that space um, allows you to have so much less judgment about yourself and others. And it is what creates your success when you know that. So that's what I do with people. Incredible. So how did you get into this? How did you find human design and decide this is how I want to support people? Well, I've had quite a varied um, journey in my career. I started out life as a chemical engineer, went to university as chemical engineer and did that for eight years until I had my children. But I never really enjoyed the corporate world. Um, I didn't really feel comfortable there or happy there and looking at my design. Now I understand why that was. Um, so I left when I had, um, my daughters, I had identical twin girls. So it was like, Hmm, you know, this is a good reason to leave corporate. Cause all my money's going to go to daycare anyway. Uh -huh. Um, and then I did a bunch of things kind of along the way as I, um, stayed home with them. And so I did some consulting work. I did some technical writing work, which was like my old career. And then I did some, um, fine art. I sold, uh, paintings and charcoal drawings that I did. Um, but all along I've kind of always felt like I showed up in life as a coach. People who know me, um, would probably agree with that. I, just love to encourage people. I love to dream a bigger life for them. It's like, where do you want to go? What do you want to do? And I love to give them ideas of like, you could try this and you could try that. So I say I was born a coach. I finally became a coach um, about 10 years ago. I had people who had been saying, what? You know, I was doing a lot of my own personal development. And they said, why don't you do coaching? But I was a mom and that felt a lot like coaching. <laughs> I'm but, already um, coaching. <laughs> I'm already coaching 24 <laughs> seven. Um, but one of my artist friends actually asked me to be her coach. She loved talking to me. She felt so motivated after we talked, she wanted to have more of that. And so I made her a few offers, one of which was, or you could pay me to be your coach, which I didn't think she would do. Um, and she's like, that's the one I want. So I just kind of fell into coaching and I did coaching for a while, but there was a lot that I didn't know kind of namely, like, how do you grow a business? The coaching part was great. I wanted to be a coach, but I was like, uh, I never wanted to be a marketer. I never yeah. wanted to be a salesperson. And I really have no idea what I'm doing. Um, so I did coaching for a few years and then some things came up in life that offered me the opportunity to pause it. Um, I had some family members with some medical issues. My children were at this point leaving, you know, finishing up high school and I wanted to be involved with them. And I thought, I'm going to take a little break and see if this is really what I want, because it still felt really hard mm -hmm. and like hard in a different way than corporate, but also similar. It's like, I just feel like I'm putting a lot of effort in and not getting what I thought. Um, yeah. 
And I knew there was a lot I didn't know, but I had been trying to work with experts and do, you know, sign up with business coaches and do all this stuff. And it, it just wasn't working and it felt really bad to me. So I took a break and in that break, in one of the like Facebook groups I was in from a program I had done, people started talking about human design. And I was like, what is this thing? Um, turns out I had been introduced to it a few years prior to that and it just hadn't really piqued my interest. But this time, for whatever reason, the timing was right. And I just went head first into the rabbit hole um, and started learning all about it. Um, the first time I met with someone to have them explain my design to me, because it's kind of hard to put together on your own. Mm -hmm. um, I just felt so seen and understood and not like just the me that I kind of showed the world. You know, we all have the me we showed the world. And then there's kind of the private you that has your hopes and your dreams. And I hope I'm this kind of person, but I don't really know. Like she told me about that person mm -hmm. and um, it just struck my heart. It just, it brought tears to my eyes. I remember after um, the call and she didn't know me at all. She, I had just plopped in her calendar. She was in Australia. I'm in the United States. She had no idea who I was. So I was like, what? Um, <laughs> but I, it was crazy. And I remember coming out my husband being like, oh my gosh, how was it? And I just had tears in my eyes. And I said, like, it was the most seen and accepted I've ever felt. And the person she described is like the person I've always hoped I was or I got to be. Like that validation that like, yeah, you like, have that hesitation. Like, am I that person? Can I be yes. this? Like, I want this for myself so badly. But then you had that confirmation. I bet that like just opened doors for you. <laughs> it was just because I didn't know her. And the thing she said, I was like, okay, well, there must be, it gave me permission to believe it. Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, I think a lot of us are like, well, I really want to think I'm this kind of person, but maybe I'm not, maybe I'm just, you know, being too full of myself. Maybe my ego is just too big. <laughs> and, um, and it really, it did a great job of removing that because I'm like, she didn't know those were the things that I was thinking. Um, and that was it. After that, I got back to it. Um, you know, I started studying it, diving in, um, learning about it. And, um, then not long after that, um, my father passed away. And one of the things that really struck me is, um, at his funeral, like that his viewing the people that turned out. Like so many people came. He lived in a small town. He was very involved in the town and the people that came out and told us stories of how he impacted their life, things we never knew. Mm -hmm. um, and in that moment, I was like, okay, I want to, you know, when you have a parent pass, it, it kind of brings you in touch with your own mortality, right? And yeah. it's like, I want to leave a legacy. My dad left this beautiful legacy and I want to be in inspired by that to leave my own legacy. And I started thinking like, how am I going to touch all these people's lives the way he did? And I was yeah. like, coaching, like at that point I knew I'm ready to go back into coaching. Now I had all this information with design. And when I restarted my business about, it was just about two years ago, like completely different experience. It feels so much easier. Well, so not much easier. Easier, well, I get to it, be myself. Yes. Which yeah, is more of a pillow. <laughs> yes. Yes. Less of a push of a resistance of just trying to check the boxes that other yeah. people are telling you to do. Absolutely. And less trying to be like, oh, I need to be like that person. I need to do it that way. It's And don't get me wrong. There, the mind still comes in and says like, you can't really do that. You should be doing this. You should be, but I have such a better understanding of it. And because I used human design and mindset, I know how to work through both and how I can see how my mind is just speaking to the distractions that are defined in my design. <laughs> and I'm going, yeah, I see what you're doing there. I'm on to you. That's not really true. <laughs> it's um, much easier to filter out like the chaos of the business world when you trust yourself and Absolutely. it's like you got that validation. So then you could begin to trust yourself. And even when distractions come up, like, Oh, maybe I should be doing that instead. Like, I know I 
used to do social media marketing. Sorry, I'm losing my voice, but <laughs> I used to do social media marketing and then I left it and my business saw like exponential success. And then I was like, oh, but I should really be doing social media marketing because everybody else was. And then I was like, wait, hold up, Leslie. Like <laughs> you just proved it to yourself what you knew this whole time and you trusted yourself and you leaned into it and you found that success. Why in the heck would you go back to this distraction, which it was for me at that time, because I found more success doing something else. And that right. was just the way I am created, the way I work the best. And something that I found really interesting that you said is like you fell into coaching naturally, yeah. but you also need to have that marketing and sales to be able to bring in more clients if you genuinely want to create a successful business. And that's where a lot of people get hung up because they're fantastic at what they do. They can yes. be a fantastic coach. They can be great. But if you don't know how to market yourself, you can't pe keep people coming in through those doors. Absolutely. So I know that human design has a lot to do with like lifting that resistance up. Can you give us a little background on how your marketing changed for you from before you knew your design and then after? Sure. So pretty much before I knew my design, my marketing looked at like, do whatever someone else told me to do. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm going to go directions. out and learn. Yeah. Follow directions. I was really good at following directions. You know, that's how I did well in school. It's like, follow the directions. Um, and so I was like, okay, well, and this persistent thought, and, and it's, it's funny because I hear my clients say it all the time. It's like, well, you know, I just figured like they know what they're talking about. So I'm going to do it that way. And, mm -hmm. and we end up really discrediting what we know ourselves. Yeah. Right. And so you know, I just did a lot of things. And a lot of the times I felt resistant. I didn't want to do it. Mm -hmm. Like there was no joy in it for me. It was very much like you said, checking the boxes and I have to do this. And, um, you know, I've learned from mindset work that anytime we're saying I have to, like that result is pretty much not going to be what we want it to be. If our thought is I have to, like if I'm yeah. forcing myself, well, when I learned my design, um, for people out there who happen to know design, I'm a manifesting generator and all generators, they say, do what you love. Right. So which really means like, do what you actually are interested in doing, what intrigues you, what you want to do. And this like doing from the space of, well, I should, because someone else said it was good, um, can just really zap our energy. Right. Mm -hmm. And as the, as the manifesting generator or, um, the classic generator, it's, it's our energy comes from being positively engaged in something. Mm -hmm. And so I found that like my business was really tiring when I was just following someone else's rules and I had no, you know, like I understood the theory why, but I wasn't bought into it. Like emotionally, yeah. I was like, but I don't like, this doesn't feel right. I also was doing a lot of initiating. Um, you know, I remember uh, that, you know, one person I was following and like, they're not trying to lead anyone astray. They're telling me what worked for them. So this mm -hmm. person was like, oh, I, um, you know, I just started giving talks and you need to have a talk. And if you have nowhere to give a talk, go you know, find a space to give it yourself, like find a location. So I did at a community center. Um, but I had a resistance the entire time, <clears throat> creating the talk, giving the talk, everything. And of course I got no results from it and it felt mm -hmm. awful. But as a, a generator, again, I'm not meant to initiate. Yeah. And it was complete initiation. Like I called around and found the space. I, you know, nobody was asking me for this. And as a generator, we're meant to be responding to things. What is flowing to us? You know, what are other people interested in? What do they want? Mm -hmm. Um, and I was just making things that I, literally, I was like making things up to do or listening to other people and saying, Oh, I could go do this, but that didn't mm -hmm. work well for me at all. 
Yeah. And it's that, like that curiosity about people. That's how I work best too. I'm like, oh, like this is what you love to do. And then I'm like, oh, maybe I could support you in doing Mm -hmm. that. And honestly, when you have fun in the way that you're talking about what you do and you get to express yourself in the way, like people are attracted to your energy and it comes it comes across in everything that you do and knowing yourself and your human design, that's like at the very, very core of it. So do you have specific marketing methods that you use right now? So it's, it's very interesting. Um, I've used some different marketing methods and they've worked at different times. Um, So in the beginning, Um, I did a lot of networking, either in person or online, um, just getting to know people and talk to people from a space of like, you know what, I'm, it's what you said. I'm so curious to hear, like, what are you doing? And like, you know, do you have a business or are you, you know, like, or maybe I talked to people who didn't have business, but just like, tell me about, cause I realized I love people's stories of their lives. Like, how did they get where they are? Where do they want to go? Like that to me is energizing, like, and seeing, you know, the bigger vision they have for themselves or, or how they came from, you know, the starting place and got to where they are. So I just, I did a lot of networking, but from that energy, because like you said, it's all energy and energy doesn't lie. And human design tells us about our energy and how our energy comes across to other people. That's basically what it's doing. It's like, um, it's like having a map of our wiring, you know, how our energy flows. So in the beginning, I did a lot of networking and just connecting with people and talking to people. And I was so jazzed about what human design was doing for me that, you know, like I just couldn't help but talk about it, you know, and and something would come up and I'd be like, Oh, you know, but not from a place of trying to sell anyone Mm -hmm. just from really the thought of like, Oh, I know about this amazing system. And I know what it can do for people. And if they knew this was out there, they would want it too. Yeah. Like they would want to know about it. So just completely that. And um, so in the beginning, that's what a lot of it was. I did belong to a couple of networking groups that allowed me to give presentations. So when the time felt right, when I felt I was responding to something, um, I did the presentation and it, it went fabulous. Um, and it's funny. I'm, so I, I'm getting my certifications through what's called the BG five business Institute, which is the application of human design to career and business. So I did my Mm -hmm. first one. Now I'm in my second one. I did my presentation while I was doing my first one. When I got into my second certification, I understood why that presentation worked because it was everything I learned in my second certification, which is called Profit Potential, how to, fit, how to Profit by Being You. And I was like, oh, I was literally talking about all the things that people want to hear from me because your design can tell you, well, what do people want to buy from me? What do they want to hear me talking about? And then how do I deliver it? Um, so I did some presentations, but in a completely different way than I used to do them. And now lately, um, my business has grown so much and my focus has been on really deeply serving the clients I have that a lot of my business now is coming from referrals. People who just are like me, like they're so excited about what they're doing, right? (laughs) They're just telling everyone and I'm like, yes, tell everyone. And then gratefully they say, oh, and you need to go talk to Stacey which is fabulous. And that's the type of service you want to be providing. Like the one that eventually will sell itself because of the impact that you're making for people. And I'm happy that you acknowledged like over time that it evolved and it changed and you learned things and you were able to grow and apply them in that way. Because so many times we start a business or we have methods that we do for a little while and they work, but you can evolve. It doesn't always have to be that one way. So for people who aren't generators, Mm -hmm. can you give us some examples of different types of human design and how that would impact the way that they would market themselves? Yes. So there's a lot of things. So when we talk about someone being a generator, that's your, um, 
I actually use different languaging in the business side of things, but this is the traditional languaging that most people are going to resonate with. So in the business side, we would call that a builder. Um, and so that is our career type, right? And there's five different career types, but there's all sorts of other things that also can tell you and inform you about your marketing. So it can be your profile, which we call public role. Um, it can be it, like, there's just so many things that come into know, play. So broad. type is just <laughs> one question, but I will answer it just, but I just want people to know, like, like there's so many layers to this, but um, whereas a generator is looking to respond and basically is like this magnet that is just attracting things. And the question for the generator is like, what is life flowing me? And then how do I feel about that? And then you move in the direction of things that interest you or engage you or feel, you know, um, that you respond to in a way of, of wanting more of it. Right. Um, a manifester is completely different. A manifester is informed by their own energy in their body. And it can happen a few different ways, depending on what their design is like, but basically their energy informs them. It's time to go do something. Mm -hmm. And so a manifester could be like, you know what? I'm going to go like rent the space, give the talk. And it doesn't matter if anyone is asking for it. Mm -hmm. They don't need that response that, you know, so when I was initiating, I was trying to be a manifester, but it wasn't correct for me. Mm -hmm. um, an advisor or a projector, sorry, advisor is the language I use. The projector mm -hmm. um, needs to be recognized for what they're good at and then invited. Mm -hmm. And so if someone is a projector, like for them to just really enjoy what they're doing, to, um, you know, learn about it and get absorbed in it and just, you know, be doing their own thing until other people start to recognize them and invite them. But the most important recognition is their own. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. they have to see, oh, I have something to offer. It is valuable. Yes, people will want this. Oh, I am, if it's right in their public role, I am an expert in this or I am a leader in this and move forward that way. So your type can give you clues as to how to go about it. And, and a lot of things, if you look on social media, people are talking about how to market from your type. Mm -hmm. There's so many more things um, that come into play <laughs> when oh, you're yeah. marketing as well. <laughs> so, um, you know, so I just wanna make sure people know that is like, oh, it's just this one piece. No, this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more to understand. My favorite part about human design and recognizing it in business is the fact that people are starting to accept and be okay with things being done differently. And it's okay yeah. to be a different type of person and it's okay to work differently. And it's okay that different methods work for you and not somebody else. And I think that that is what's creating more success for more people than just being like, oh yeah, that worked for me. So you should do it exactly how I did it. And I think that's such an important conversation to have because none of those ways are necessarily wrong. They work for somebody, right? but it's okay to work differently. And I love, I love that about like getting to know yourself and being mm -hmm. open to trusting yourself. It is really hard to trust yourself, especially when we've been, we grew up in school. We knew how to follow directions. Most of us knew how to follow directions. Right? <laughs> and we're rewarded for that, right? Like not only yeah. did we know how, but when we followed directions, well, we got the good grade. Yeah. So we were taught not to listen to ourselves and it's like, oh, I don't want to do it that way. But if I don't do it that way, I don't get the good grade. So it was actually like kind of really trained out of us. Yeah. So we have to trust ourselves, ourselves. Most. Absolutely. Do you find that the people that you work with initially feel resistance when they start to act in the ways that are towards their own human design? Do they find that resistance or is it more of like, oh, thank you for telling me I can do this? <laughs> um, a lot of people who come to me have already heard of human design. Um, and had at least a tiny bit of exposure. So it's like they have the openness to um, 
at least wanting to know more. Like, how does this work? Does this really work? I get to do what I want to do. Um, and they're, you know, like they're open to it, but they're just like hedging their bets a little. Like they're just like, well, I, I really want this to be true. I'm not really sure if it's true yet. Right. Um, mm -hmm. But most of them, you know, have felt the like, oh, this is harder than I thought it would be, or than it feels like it needs to be. Like they're, you know, they're coming to me because something isn't, you know, it's like, oh, I've, I've studied with all these different people or I've listened to all these different people, whether it's experts in the field or my parents or my friends. And like, it's just not quite working out the way I thought it would. And so, um, you know, they're already coming with like a willingness to try something because it's like, well, I've been trying these things and they're not quite working. Yeah. Um, and it's more about the reminder of, you know, letting them see themselves so that they can develop that trust and then just reminding them to trust, reminding them like, yes, of course, this is what your brain is going to offer you. You can't really do it that way. That's not really going to work. You should be posting more. You, you know, need to be out in front of people, whatever it is, right. Mm -hmm. um, that maybe isn't in alignment with their design and then giving them the practical suggestions that say, well, you know, based on your design, here's a practice to practical suggestion. Why don't you try this? Mm -hmm. And then normally, you know, it's in a way it feels easy what I'm suggesting because it's in alignment with their design and they're like, <laughs> yeah. okay. <laughs> but as soon as they start seeing that working, you know, then of course it's, it's like they are lose some of that resistance to, well, I want it to be true, but I'm not sure if it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that's also why it's such a great thing to have somebody to coach you through that. I think having that person there to support you and keep you true to yourself is something that's so valuable because I used to be a health coach and I'm a dietitian mm -hmm. and a personal trainer and people would start to see results with the way that they were eating or the way that they were working out and they would be like oh but I know this way that worked for me before and I would be like wait 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 this way is working for you and yes it it might seem easier than the way you were miserable before, but you don't have to be miserable to get the results that you want. And mm -hmm. I feel like that's another thing that we've been conditioned in some aspects that it has to be hard for us yes. to get what we want. And it doesn't always have to be so hard. Like, yes, you're going to meet challenges with everything you do. I believe that, but it doesn't have to be as hard as we think most of the time. No. And we've also, I think all been taught to motivate ourselves from a space of negativity, like of being hard on ourselves. We should be doing more. We should be working harder. We should be like, if something didn't work well, what did I do wrong? Which is actually a very common um, shadow or destruction in, in human design. If if um, you have what's called a split definition, a simple split, we call it a collaborative assimilation. Your first thought is probably going to be like, oh, I must have done something wrong and blame yourself. Um, so that's really common in the world. But then it's like, instead of having acceptance and compassion for ourselves, it's like we become the, you know, the author authoritarian in our life. Like, no, you have to put in more, you know, it's not going to come to you. You have to you know, work harder, work more, give it a thousand percent. Like that's particularly in the U S the whole like manifest destiny pulled ourselves up by our bootstraps kind of thing, which isn't truth anyway, but, um, <laughs> you know, like that's what we were raised on those stories of grit and determination and people who just had it so hard, but then they rose to success. And it's like, we take that role with ourselves of the person who is, you know, like pushing us. Mm -hmm. And, but I have found particularly in the last few years with like dealing with a pandemic and all of these things, most of us have a nervous system that is overactivated. And when we try to force ourselves to do things more often than not, we shut down instead of actually, it's not motivating. It's like, well, I'm just not even going to try because I know if I fail, I'm just going to give myself a hard time. So what's the point? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's like, well, how are you going to meet yourself if your first try doesn't work? Because some people, 
you know, if, if you're um, a profile of a three, which we call a pioneer in our public role, they do things by trial and error. So mm -hmm. how do you take care of yourself so you can show up? And if something doesn't work the first time, it's you take it as, oh, this is just the way I learn and, and how I do things. And it's not like I'm a failure. Yeah. Yeah. And listening to those thoughts that you're having while you're going through the process, that's going to give you so much insight on how you work and how you can work better and how you're talking to yourself. Like, listen to it. Are you being mean to yourself? Because the way you talk to yourself is going to impact everything. Yeah. So like yes. learning your human design is also going to help you learn like, okay, these thoughts that are going in on in my head, I don't necessarily need to think that way because that's not how I'm going to thrive. It's just the way that I've thought for such a long time, but it doesn't always have to be that way. Yeah. And it will help you like sort out, like, is there something helpful in this thought or is this just an unhelpful thought? And, mm -hmm. um, it's really interesting. So if we talk about the shadows or distractions in our design, it's the areas that are undefined. And when you get familiar with how does that show up when we're in the shadow state of it, it's almost like your design tells you your, like the sentences that are going to be in your head. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so for instance, if you have an undefined, so in traditional human design, they call it an Ajna center. And in the business side, they call it conceptualization function. So if you're undefined there, um, often your shadow is like, you need to be certain, you need to know, you need to be right. You don't want to look stupid. You don't necessarily want to share what you think or what your opinions are or the insights you've had because you're afraid people won't understand and they'll challenge you and then you won't be able to explain it and rise to the challenge and so like this can dictate a lot of behavior as you're trying to protect yourself from oh, yeah. you know like what might happen if you're not certain and it's actually the reason why a lot of us follow someone else is like well i did what they said it's almost like we can it's an explanation that has us not necessarily looking so stupid right yeah Versus if we do it our own way and happen to have an undefined conceptualization, then it's like, oh, what if I'm wrong? It'd be yeah. a big thing, right? So taking responsibility. Like you can take responsibility for, you don't want to necessarily always take responsibility for your failures, but at the same time, we also don't always take responsibility for our successes either. But if you take back that power, you're like, okay, well, that way didn't work, but that was my choice of the way that I did it. I think that's a hard thing to do, but it also allows you to take full responsibility of your success too. And that is an incredible feeling because that's something I had to work through and start mm -hmm. to begin to trust myself and be like, okay, well, if I get this many clients this month, um, that I can own that success. If I don't meet that, that's also my responsibility. And I can go ahead and reflect like, okay, well, did I do what I said I was going to do? And like these different aspects, like, did I talk to the people I wanted to talk to? Or was there something going on in my life? Like, you can look at those aspects, but taking responsibility for yourself. I'm, I don't know this, but is that also a part of human design? Well, I think what it comes down to for me is understanding like, well, what does that look like? And again, what is the energy that you're doing it with? So it's, mm -hmm. if it's like, oh, I said that I was going to talk to like these 10 people this month, but um, I'll just use my design because I'm most familiar with it. There's, you know, something in my design, a trait to find in my design that says that I need to honor my moods. And if I'm not in the mood, I'm not meant to do it. And that if I do it when I'm not in the mood, I'm not going to get the same results as if I was in the mood, right? Mm -hmm. So, but if I'm in the shadows of, of like, oh, I'm, I'm afraid that I've been trying to do it my way. I don't like the results and I'm afraid it's not going to work. And then I'm going to look stupid because my business isn't going to gr grow. So I better go, even though I'm not in the mood, go talk to those 10 people. Mm -hmm. Not the space to be in, right? Yeah probably not going to work out even if I make myself do it. But when I say like, well, why don't I want to do it? Because 
I love this system. I love what it can bring people. And I just want the world to know about it so that everybody can decide for themselves if it's something that they're interested in or not, right? I want them to know this exists and this possibility and potential exists. And then what they choose to do with it is fine. But if I'm not willing to talk about it and it's something I love, like what's going on there, right? Like, mm -hmm. why is that? And so it's, it's my responsibility is to get me back into the space of, you know, what motivates me in my business in the first place. And it's that connection with people. It's that curiosity about people. It's being inspired about what could be possible for them if they knew the information that I knew. Yeah. And it's yeah. not about getting them as a client, right? But it is like, look, I have this thing to offer you and I want, I just want you to know about it because you might think it's amazing too, and it might be right for you. And then if it is, I'm happy to talk to you about it more or you can find someone else to talk about. Like, you know, it's, it's not the result that motivates me when I'm living in the, you know, I need X clients by Y date, then yeah. I'm completely out of touch with the energy that actually is why I want to do this in the first place. So to me, that's the responsibility that comes in is working on understanding how my design works and trusting it and having faith in it and understanding when my mindset is getting in the way of it and like untangling that so I can get back into alignment of, oh, that's right. These strengths in my design are the things that I bring to people. This is how I serve people. Mm -hmm. And let me go back to that and have faith yeah. in that. I love that. And that's such a great way to be able to like move yourself forward faster and get yourself out of what you may feel like is a rut, but mm -hmm. looking at the actual things that are causing blocks for you and not just being like, oh, that system doesn't work. I'm going to try an entirely new system. It's like getting to the root of like, okay, what's really going on is, is the way I'm working not really motivating me. I know I was never motivated when my coaches would be like, okay, you got to hit your 10K month. How much are you going to make this week? How much are you going to make this month? I'm like, I don't I don't really care. Like, how many? <laughs> like, obviously, I do care, like running a business to create revenue and all of that, right. that stuff. But I was more motivated by knowing that I could support someone this week. Like, mm -hmm. oh, I can go out there and I can support them in seeing a different perspective or I can support them in changing the way that they they do daily life, something like that, that could change their life potentially. That's what motivated me. And when I let go of, okay, I got to hit these 10K months and make X amount of revenue, that's when I really started to not only create success in my business, but really feel it and mm -hmm. like be really excited about being in business because it was making that impact that I genuinely desired. Yeah. And that's ultimately like, so there's all these details and all these things you can dig into in human design. And it ultimately comes down to each career. You know, we talked about each career type. There is an energetic signature that when you find, and it's not like a I've reached the end point, but it's just like a higher and higher levels of it. But when you're in this energetic signature, that is what creates success more than what actions you're taking or what things you're you know doing or not doing or what words you're using. It, it is the frequency of that signature. So for our generators, that is satisfaction. Um, for our manifest manifestors, it's peace. For our... Um, projectors, it is success. And for our reflectors, it's um, the light. So for again, for me as a, as a generator, when I am in that space of satisfaction, it's like, it, it, it's funny. And, and like on one hand, it's also like, it's those goals and things aren't as important because I feel satisfaction and yet it feels like things are happening and clients are coming in and referrals are coming. And I'm like, what? Wow. Like, <laughs> all, you know, and it's to remember like that when we are in that, that frequency, um, that is when we are most attractive to the people we're meant to work with. That's how they'll find us. Mm-hmm. 
And so it's whatever you need to do to get into that frequency. And that may look like, you know what? I just need a day to rest and um, I have a new book and I want to read the book, right? Mm -hmm. And yet our minds would say, what? You're supposed to be working <laughs> yeah. 40, 50, 60 hours a week. You can't read a book. That's never going to get you a client. Mm -hmm. But it's honoring yourself and saying, I get to feel good as I do this. You know, we think like, oh, if we hustle and if we do all these, to me, hustling means doing all these things we don't actually want to do. If we mm -hmm. hustle and we work really hard and we, and we kind of like, you know, <laughs> eat. Okay. That's not nice. <laughs> Anyway, we work on it. I'm going to rewind that. <laughs> but if we put ourselves through, you know, the crap and we feel really bad and it's like, oh, I'll just do this for some length of time and then I'll merge out the other side, you know, and, and be in this place of success and it will all look great. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, you can skip the crap part. You can just focus on what do I need to do that feels good to me? And Again, if you're really wanting to serve and support people, if those things aren't business related things, then asking yourself, why is that? Is like, okay, there's probably something mindset going on in your mindset, right? Because when you feel like, oh, I do know how to get out there and share this with people and I do know how to help people and I am, you know, fulfilled and satisfied and successful and delighted when I'm helping people, then you're going to want to do it. Yeah. And it's going to build that in you even more. And this idea that we have to walk through this like really lousy period in order to get to success, I just want to challenge for people is like, you don't really have to. <laughs> There's a better way. <laughs> so if people want support, not having to do that and creating this different way of doing business that works best for them, how can they find you to work with you? Yes. Yeah, so, um, my business name is custom built life. Um, I actually chose that name before I started using human design. And it was just, it was the one thing when I took my pause, I didn't like go of, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is perfect because right. Your, your business, your life is customized to you and who you are. Like that's what human design is about being your unique self. So custom built with a T life.com is my website. You can find me there. There's a link there to set up a consult. Um, and so you can just sign up for a 60 minute consult. I at this point, I talk to everybody who wants to work with me first, um, before they get into coaching, because I want to make sure that, you know, I'm right for you and you're right for me. And we're going to be able to, you know, have this be a very fruitful engagement for whoever I'm working with. Um, so sign up. It's a free consult, 60 minutes. We'll talk about what's going on and I'll tell you how human design could inform what you're going through and then um, help you reach a decision as to whether you think it's something you want to do or not. Fantastic. I would definitely take you up on that call. So if you are listening, don't, don't hesitate. Just click her link. Go sign up because this is something fantastic to learn more about yourself and, and everything that goes along with human design. So Thank you so much for hanging out with us today. Well, thank you for having me. This is fine. It is my favorite thing to talk about. So <laughs> I always appreciate the opportunity. And, you know, that's my goal, just to spread it around so people can check it out for themselves. And um, I just want to say, if human design isn't your system, whoever's listening, if you're like, I checked it out, it didn't resonate with it, find a way to get to know yourself. Because that's what it really comes down to, is that knowing yourself and trusting yourself I think if everyone was operating from that space, um, the world would just be, you know, a much better place. So find your system that helps you know who you are and then be that person unapologetic, unapologetically. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Stacey. And thank you. <laughs> different marketing strategies to bring consistent clients into your business without feeling the pressure to post on social media, make sure you watch the free training on the client connection method, which is in the description below. Thanks for hanging out with us today.